Right, okay. So this is uh, part five. Um, I don't think you missed any part of it apart from um, before I did some of the uh, cream on this bit here for the light I was just showing you um, I fixed the whole picture or well, I definitely fixed the center picture part of the picture um, because I don't want the behind um, the, the this color in behind there to move so I fixed it um, and allowed it to dry so a couple of minutes uh, and then I started to put some cream on top of there then I realized we weren't running so I think that's where you are um, we'll be doing this again anyway so it's not a problem I have put in quite a bit of the negative painting um, which is uh, for the for the sky behind the trees um, and we'll continue with that um, I think so it is pale blue and as it gets towards the center there where the sun is it's gone to a, um, a cream right so this is a pale blue and then a very very pale blue and this is going towards the sunshine which is around there and I shall put some of it in and then um, I can blend that down and the, 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 the pastel beneath this doesn't move because I've fixed it. Now I use, um, I'll show you the fixative that I use, it's Unison Colour Pastel Fixing Spray. You can get um, Frisk and you can also get Windsor & Newton. Um, you could, at a push, if you've not got any in, you could use uh, hairspray. I used to use that as a student um, in my college days. But um, now I use a pastel fixing spray, which uh, is really good for uh, fixing the colour, allowing you to, um, to to move on top without disturbing the, the pastel underneath. Um, it also gives the paper, I don't know if I can, if you can hear that, so that doesn't move, maybe a little bit I haven't fixed there, but where where the fixative was, it, it gives it a texture, which is lovely for putting, um, putting pastel on top of. Okay, right, so we're going to continue with this um, sun then behind there. I want to make this around this tree and everything, I want to make it more cream coming through there and it's coming down so just lightly put it on and then very lightly merge this into uh, into the background so that we just get these trees now I will be sharpening these trees up um, as we go through so you can see there's not real skill to this bit just knowing where you're putting it I guess and uh, you're putting it behind those trees okay so and as it gets further up there then the sky becomes um, a pale blue I just want a little bit more there okay right now let's um, just want very I'm actually going to use white because you don't get any lighter than white and the Sun let's face it is the lightest thing the center of this Sun is the lightest thing on this picture even though you can't see it as a Sun it will be a light spot so we'll we'll leave that there for now and Right, okay, so what I'll continue doing is some of these um, sky holes at the top just to give some air through these trees. Now, you might not get them right the first time, okay? I, I sometimes uh, put them on and think, oh no, it looks like they look like Christmas tree baubles. So don't worry if it doesn't go on the first time. But like I say to you before, 
pastels are very forgiving so you just go back over it and try again until you get it looking like what you want and I'm just going to uh, bear in mind this is fixed this green under here is fixed now and I'm going to add some more but I just want to make barely touching the paper I'm just going to scumble that over and mix it in to give the sun where it's coming in front of those trees can you see that there is a, a lightish tone um, and again I'm going to reinforce those trees but I just want to, I just want to put some, almost like sunbeams are crossing, are crossing the front of that. And I'm doing it in the dark, in, on the light, real light blue. You could use the cream, I suppose. Um, I'm not too worried which you use, as long as you blend it in. Okay, and then we'll just continue doing these skyles. They're quite, um, there's quite a lot of them. It'll give you trees um, some air. So there's a lot of sky through that. Um, and like I say, we're not really seeing it. So all I'm doing is just placing this. I mean, you use your photograph as reference to an extent. Um, you don't want uh, uniform pat patterns happening. You know, you want to keep it random. And it's nice to use, you see the tree there that's standing? Uh, it, it's really um, prominent away from that uh, sky. So what I want to do is just between the branches and I will put some branches in in a minute. Just pick out some shapes. And then it is literally just keep going until you think that's it, I've done. And stop. And like I say, you may find that on some bits it, it doesn't work and you think, mm, I don't really like that. Then do it over with the, with the uh, tree colour and then have another go. Okay, now you'll see me touching the, uh, the sky holes, this light blue. That just kills it a little bit. So um, when I've done it, I'll just kill it so it's not quite as bright okay now let's just reinforce those trees then so we've lost one or two of them um, I just want to reinforce some of those trees so I've got uh, this is the eggplant which is a really dark purple you can use as long as it's a dark hue so it could be dark brown not black Try and stay away from black and white for colours like this. They're for highlights and shadows. Um, so a dark hue, dark green, dark brown. Like I say, this is a dark purple. And just going to pick up that tree. And then the other trees that's towards the background so you bring the trees back now just be aware that some of those trees in there are actually not as dark they are receding and they're getting um, light on top of them so they're uh, they've sort of lost the, the dark tone So I'm going to stay away from that. That one there. This is the one I want 